But today, I'm beginning to understand why it's been spread. I'm here today to, to tell you that Jesus Christ is alive and well, and he's on the throne of God, and he is sending the Spirit to us, and it's what will we do with it today? What do you want from him? What are you willing to give to him? He wants your all. He wants your all. And you know, there's not a one of us that could stand a little of the desert of God, which is his Holy Spirit. We need an infilling. We need a touch to be able to stand. People, we haven't seen anything yet. You know, we're seeing major cities being burned, people being murdered in the streets, looting, stealing, lying, cheating, every perversion that can be thought of, you're seeing it on TV today. But the Holy Ghost is what will separate us from the things of the world. And I'll tell you, you better have a good measure of his spirit in you, or you're not going to leave this earth when he comes back. He said, the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies. Amen. We better have enough of the Holy Ghost in us to take us off of the light ground into glory when he calls. When we hear that trumpet, you don't have time to say, wait a minute. You better be ready to go. You better be ready to fly with him. Amen. It's straight up. No long runway for you. It's in the glory or not. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise Amen. the Lord. Shall we pray? Almighty God, we thank you for the blessings you give us. And the greatest blessing that you gave was our salvation at Calvary. That, Lord, we're all children of the Most High God for the price that Christ paid for our sins. Lord, we need more of you in our life. We need your strength. We need your spirit. We need your word engrafted in us. We need to walk in the light as only you can lead. We need to be a light as only you can shine in us. Lord, help us. Help us to be more like you. And Father, each person here, I ask for a special blessing to be a part of. I ask for a holy anointing to fall upon. Let this be a day that we'll never forget. That it'll be a day of rejoicing as long as we live. And Father, we thank you as you sit at the right hand of the Father, making intercession for us right now. And you've heard the needs. We know the needs of our country. But Lord, we have many needs in this body. We have priorities that need touched and healed. And Lord, we need a special touch for our sister Jane. Touch her in a mighty way. Let her know that she's loved and being lifted up. Touch her and let her know that the Spirit of God is mending her body right now. Father, help us that we do no harm to your kingdom by word or deed, that everything we do and say will bring honor and glory and praise to you. Father, the favors we ask, we ask in Christ's name. The one who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen.
Our next hymn is 137. Did you ever see anything for your No, that's a good sight. I'll tell you, we're blessed. Amen. <laughs> we are blessed. You know, I've said over and over, we live by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. And if he speaks something to us one time, we're to be obedient to it. We're to listen to it. And if we believe, if we believe that Jesus Christ is Lord, if we believe that 2,000 years ago he came to this earth, died on a cross for us, if we believe that he is the Son of God or God in the flesh, if we believe this, if we believe he was resurrected from the dead. But Paul said, if there is no resurrection, we are of all people most miserable. And I'm here to tell you, if he is not resurrected, go on home. Because you're wasting your time. But I'm here to tell you, he lives. Amen? And we know he lives because every one of us in this place has been touched by God. Every one of us knows that he's real. And because he's real, we got to tell the world. we got to get tough, people. we got to get hard nose about Jesus Christ. He is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. He established a pattern for life. He come to show us God. And I'll tell you, he's not what most people think he is today. They think if we walk like God, if we're to talk like God, and we're to be like God, we're to think like God, I'll tell you, we need to clean this stuff whacked up a little bit. Amen. We cannot walk in arrogance, we cannot walk in self righteousness. We cannot walk thinking we're better than somebody else. We have got to humble ourselves. Jesus Christ, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, walked with the lowest of the low people on this earth. He walked with the poor. 
He didn't go to the country club and strut around like he owned the world, which he did. He owned the world and he owns it today, amen? But he didn't act like it. He come with the poorest, the lowest, the beat down, the ones that were hurting, the ones that was begging for help. And he sit down on the dirt of the ground and he ate with them and he talked to them and he prayed with them and he loved them, amen? He didn't have to have the best of everything. He had the worst of everything, but made the worst the best, amen? I'll tell you, when he changes things, he makes the ugly beautiful. He makes the lost to be saved. He makes the foul mouth to be pure. He takes the stone out of the heart and puts a heart of flesh in. He walks in light and he puts light into you that you become the light. He touches you. He walks with you. He said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Never. That word never doesn't mean once in a while I might take a break. He said, never leave you. He's here. He's watching us right now. He's sitting, he's just watching every one of us. How, how are we going to react? What are we thinking about? I'll tell you, be careful what you think because he knows. My thinking gets me in more trouble than what I really say. Even the thinking can be wrong. Most of the time it is. But I'm going to tell you something. He's always there to reprove, to correct, to touch. We got to start making up our mind. What do we want from him? In Corinthians, Paul says, What? Know you not? For your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. Do you not know that this temple is where God lives and stays? He's in here with us because we're gathered in his name. But I'm going to tell you, when we go home, he's in here. And I'll tell you one thing, most of the time when we have a touch from God, it's when we're by ourselves. When we're praying or seeking his face and he'll come in and he'll touch you and fellowship with you, he's got time to be with every one of us all day long if that's what we want. He doesn't, he's not worried about time. We're the one as old as we are. We got we got to worry about this time a little bit, having enough to get around to tell people that Jesus Christ is Lord. Amen. Don't waste a minute. Let the world know that Jesus Christ is Lord. Don't back down from nobody. I tell you, don't worry about what the world thinks about you. You only worry about what God thinks about you. Walk in the light as he's in the light. And I'll tell you, when that trumpet sounds, we're going straight up. Amen? We're going up with him. Because he said so. Because he said so. And I'll tell you this, God is not a man that he can lie. And he doesn't lie. He tells the truth. If he says something one time, you can take it to the bank because it's established in heaven. And it will never never depart. In Hebrews, the 10th chapter, 24, 25, it says, and let us consider one another to, to provoke unto love and good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another and so much the more as we see the day approaching. I'm going to tell you, people, we're seeing the signs everywhere of his coming. You know, he says, you can discern the weather, you can discern the sky, you can discern everything about you. Why can't you? Jesus said, why can't you discern the coming of the Son of Man? We're seeing evil prevail. We're seeing things happen that Christ said would happen. 
The Bible also says that we'll increase the knowledge. You know, I'm kind of stupid when it comes to electronics and things like that. I wouldn't know what, I have no idea what you're doing. <laughs> But I'm going to tell you, Justin stood out in front of my house. I don't know where he had a cell phone or what he had in his head. But he's pushing buttons. They said, look back. And this was several years ago. He just pushing button. Come down to my house. I saw a ball laying out in my backyard from a satellite. I'm telling you, God says that knowledge would increase. He didn't say wisdom. Wisdom <laughs> is what you do with the knowledge you have that pleases God, I'll tell you. And we don't use wisdom in what we know. But he also said, I've said this a lot of time, but it's fitting that I say it today. When this gospel is preached in the whole world, then the end will come. Well, glory to God through the satellites. If they can show a ball in my backyard, I'm telling you, the word of God's already covering the whole world, and it's time, people. We better be ready. We better be walking in the light. We better be shouting the victory. We better be doing what he's saying here, provoking one another to love. What he's saying is, Encourage people to love one another. Be strong in the Lord. What is the great commandment I'm asking a thousand times? But I keep telling you because it is the most important thing that you can have in your heart. That you love God with all your strength, soul, mind, and spirit. And what's the next one? That we love each other. Amen? And if we don't, we're not going into glory. He said, these are the great commandments. We're to encourage each other to love, to forgive, to overlook. He said to pray. Pray for those who despitefully use you. Oh, I'll tell you, you know, he said, as John says in the first John, as Christ walked, we ought also to walk. And I'm going to tell you, if we're not loving the sinner, we're not walking with Christ. If we're not saying the right thing to him, we're not speaking as the oracles of God. When the King of Kings could come to this earth and forgive people like me, when he can set me free, I'm telling you, he can set anyone free. He can set you on a path to glory. He can let you see things that you can't even, he might even make you shout, glory to God, amen? He might even make you raise your hand and praise him. He might even make you go out of here and witness to somebody or invite him to come to church. He might do that to you. That's it. I mean, he might even make you uncomfortable. Jesus Christ, I make you uncomfortable. Praise the Lord. But I'll tell you what, you'll get over it if you'll take a step of faith. If you'll listen to it. If you'll do like Reverend Gray said, breathe it to be wise, but practice it. And practice the word. I'll guarantee you, you'll get stronger every time you open your mouth. The more you talk, about Jesus, the easier it is to talk about it. Now, the only place that hasn't worked for me is when I sit up here and forgot I had the mic on and sang a song. That didn't encourage me a bit. I might have heard through that because I realized that wasn't the gift God gave me. But I'll tell you one thing, if you'll walk in the spirit with him, you'll walk in the truth. And you'll walk and you'll do the things that he said. They said, forsake not the assembly. You don't know how good it is to sit up here and look around and see your faces. You don't know to have you present. 
in body. I'll tell you, if, if Gary and Roberta had not started the Zoom service, we'd have been in a lot worse shape than we're in today. Right. I'll tell you, it opened the door for a lot of things. I'm going to tell you, it was a blessing to me. And I thank God for every one of you. Every one of you has a special place. You have God in you, exhorting one another. He said, pray. Pray for those who despitefully use you. Reach out. You don't have time to hate anybody. We got to be like Christ. The very people that shoved a crown of thorns on his head. That lady's back open with a whip. That drove nails into his hands and feet. That shoved a spear into his side that spit in his face. You want to be like him? Forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. The only way that we can receive forgiveness is to forgive. The only way that we can walk in the light is to receive the light ourselves. The only way that we can speak encouragement to other people is to receive the Spirit of God into our lives and to go out and share it with others. John said, out of your belly will flow rivers of living water. This spake he of the Holy Ghost, which was not yet come, for he had not yet been glorified. Thanks be to God that on the day of Pentecost, God Almighty sent the Holy Ghost for everyone that whosoever will can have it. By what amount? What do you want? How much do you want from it? Enough to say, well, I, I, I went to church Sunday. I give God an hour in church Sunday. What do you want? What more do you want? I want, I'll tell you what God tells you. What, he says, I want 24 hours a day, seven days a week. I want you loving me. I want you to give everything. Hold nothing back. He's either Lord or he's not Lord of your life. And you know, we've got to make him Lord. He does not kick doors in. You have to open them. You have to say, come on in, Lord. Mm -hmm. I need you. Lord, I can't do this myself. We got, we're, we're, we're like prodigal children until we recognize our sin and head for home. Then the door is open for us. Amen. But we got to go through it. We're the ones that has to come into it. Pray for your enemies, bless them, reach out for them, do the things that God says, and then you'll know that you are a children of the Most High God. I'm going to tell you something, people. God Almighty saved you by a miracle. You, you have no power to save yourself. Your salvation is a miracle. If you can say glory to God, he is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, and I call him Lord. You know who's doing that? The Holy Ghost that's in you. Because Paul says in Corinthians, no man, no man, no man can call Jesus Lord, blessed be by the Holy Ghost. People, I'm going to tell you, we need, we need to get a, a dose of the ghost, amen? We need to get a, a new shot, a new vaccine of the Holy Spirit in us. He said, how much more will he give to those who ask? I don't know. I don't have that answer, but I know he keeps giving more, amen? He keeps blessing and blessing and blessing. And every time he does something for you, that's a new measure of his spirit. You walk in faith because you've been touched.
Not only do you walk in faith, but you walk in knowledge. You see, I don't have to say, I believe Jesus is real. I know he's real. I know it. And you know it because he touched you. And I'll tell you, when he touches you, you're never the same. Now I'm going to get down to my message. Jesus went to church at all the time. Almost every Sabbath, he was in a synagogue somewhere. Teaching, preaching, showing people how to live. Showing them and telling them, what's God really like? God is our why does he call us children? Because he loves us. And I'll tell you, you know, it's like these little kids here. There's not a one of us here that wouldn't take a bullet for them. Amen? There's not a one of them that we wouldn't step in between somebody and try to hurt. And that's what God is. He's our father. He's, you, know, you don't bother my kids. So I'm with them. Say, so go ahead and put them in the furnace if you want to. You're not going to burn them. Go ahead and throw them in the lion's den. See what good it does. You can't hurt my kids because I'm with them. And even, even if I let you take their life, I'm going to raise them into glory. They're going to be where the king of king is. See, you cannot lose being a Christian. You can't lose being a believer. Being together, we fellowship. God touches people and he saves them because they come together and we draw one from another. Did you ever see somebody that you wanted to be more like them? Did you ever, did you ever just run on to somebody that was just a wonderful person. I'm going to tell you, probably close to 60 years ago, there was an old black preacher here in Fairmont. I don't know why, but all the people I had not they were Baptists. I don't know why, but they were. But that's okay. They're still my buddies and friends. Amen? But that guy, every time I seen him, that was back when things weren't segregated real good, too. That guy come up and he just hugged me and told me he loved me. He just preached on his I love you, brother. You know, I'm telling you that story today because he's long gone. But that's what God wants. That's what he wants us to be like. And I'll never forget that I want to be like him because I saw God in him. What what showed in him? He loved. He didn't he didn't make fun of me because I was white. He didn't down me, he didn't hate me because I was white. He loved me. So I wanted to be more like him. That's what this is all about. In Luke's gospel, we have a story. It says, and he was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath. And behold, there was a woman which had a spirit of infirmity 18 years and was bowed over and could in no wise lift up herself. And when Jesus saw her, he called her to him and said to her, Woman, thou art loose from thine infirmity. And he laid his hand on her, and immediately she was made straight and glorified God. You know, God says, Forsake not the assembling of yourselves together. What are we here for? To learn about God, to hear about the, uh, the word of God, to study to praise him, to do the things that he wants us to do. 
And that lady was like this. She was doubled over and could not stand up. Could not stand up. But she come to church just to hear about God. She wanted to know about God. What's it going to be like when we get out of this world? Because I'm here to tell you people, she was at the right place at the right time. Because God in the flesh was in that synagogue. And he looked over at this woman all bowed over, doubled over, hurting and misery. And he said, lady, you're healed. And he reached out and touched her. He reached out and touched her. And I'll tell you people, the world needs a touch from God. We're in the right place at the right time. He's here with us today. If you have me, he'll help. Amen. Well, then he'll do what you need if you want him to. Yeah. I'll tell you one thing. I was awful glad he touched me. Or I had cancer so bad they didn't think I'd live. He touched me. I thank God for that. Be at the right place at the right time. People praying for you. One for now. That's what we're here for. Live it. Walk it. If you're in his presence, he'll meet your need. He'll meet your need. Amen. Our opposing him. 337. And the altar is always open if there is a need. Thank you. 
front barrel, we just test this. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the message today. There's so much truth tonight.